So this is a review. I'm going to get you started on it, let you work on it for a while. So let's just jump through, through here on a few of these. So number one, what is that a picture of? That is a tessellation. It's the repeating of a pattern, repeating of that hexagon. Okay, number two says, what's the degree of rotational symmetry? So in other words, how many degrees do you have to rotate it to get it to match back up to what it looked like originally? 360 would be all the way around. You wouldn't have to go all the way back around. 45. So basically, how many degrees would it take this line to get to this line? If you like, you know, if it was rotating on this point right here, it was spinning on that, how many degrees would it have to turn? 60. Good. It'd be 60 degrees. How'd you do that? Yeah, look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces. So if you just do 360 divided by six, that tells you that it's 60 degree rotation there. Okay, so you're gonna do the same thing on number five. That's what you're doing here on number two, telling how many degrees you have to rotate it. Okay, you're good there, should be good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you get grouped up, get to work on this, we'll come back together at the end of class and go over some more of it together. All right, I did one or two. So number three, dilation does not change the size of an object. False, it does change it. A dilation changes the shape of an object, but not the size. False. That's false also, it changes the size only. Okay, give an example of a letter that when rotated turns into a different letter. Okay, good. W and M. All right, if you take an, an M or a W, whichever one you'll start off with, and rotate it, it turns into the other one. Okay, so that's one example. All right, number five. How many degrees must, must each object be ro rotated to map onto itself? Start at 72. So this one's 72, just 360 divided by 5. The music thingy is 360. What kind of music note is this, by the way? There's somebody's music in here. What what value is that? Half, whole, quarter, eight, sixteenth. Eight. It's eighth note. Okay, good. Yeah, so this one's 360. It does not have rotational symmetry. Okay, on this one, the shadow should not should not be on here. How many degrees does this rotate? 180. 180. And then on this one is what? 90. Is 90. Okay, reflection is a flip. A rotation is a turn. Translation is a slide. And the dilation changes the size. Flip, turn, slide, change the size. Okay, let's flip over to the next page. So let's go ahead and do number seven real quick. So plot those points, five, six, nine, six, and eight, 10. Five, six, nine, six, and eight, 10. Okay, now what we're gonna do is a rotation of 90 degrees, and I got the rule listed right here for you. X, Y becomes negative Y, X. So what does that mean to do? Flip. Well, there's something we do before we flip them. Change, change the sign. Change the sign on the Y, then you flip the two numbers. So on this one, what is five, six gonna turn into? Negative six, five. What is nine, six gonna turn into? Negative six nine, and then what is eight ten going to turn into? Negative ten eight. Yep. All right, so let's plot those new points. I think you did. Negative Ooh. six five. Negative six nine, and then negative ten eight. No. Okay. So if we rotate it about the origin right here, this goes to right here. Okay. 
Yeah. Now to do your rotation. All right, the rotations always turn what way? It's not on this question, but it's counterclockwise. Okay, remember, rotations always go counterclockwise. Do you think this is all Okay, number eight, what scale factor was used to dilate from the smaller one to the larger one? Okay, so let's just find sides that correspond. So this side Two. and this side right here. Two. So how long is the side on the smaller one? Two. Two. How long is the side on the bigger one? Four. Four. So the question is to get from here to here. Two. Okay, two times something gives me four. Yeah. And that's right, it's two. So the scale factor on this one is two. Two times two is four. Okay, what is an isometry? What is an isometry? Isometry is something. Okay, you're thinking of isosceles. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's good though, that's good you remember that. But this is isometry. Okay, so remember this is a transformation. Okay, uh, let me just say it this way. Transformation that does not change what? Size. The size or shape. It's a transformation that does not change the size or shape of the figure. So what are some examples of, of isometries? What are some of those things that we've done that doesn't change the shape or size? Okay, rotation does not change the shape or size. What's another one? Translation. Translation doesn't change the shape or size. Good. And there's another one we did that doesn't change the shape Reflection. or size. Reflection. None of those change the shape or size. Moves in a different place, may flip it, but it's still the same as it was originally. Wait, so what is the tessellation? Does that count as... Yeah, tessellation would be an isometry also. Yep. A st well, a, st a standard tessellation, yeah. Yes. Okay, so give a non-example now of an isometry. A dilation. a dilation. Good, because a dilation does change the size. Okay. Okay, we did that one. We did that one. We talked about that. Okay, so on this one, it flipped across here, and then it flipped across here. So that is the same thing as doing what? Just one thing. How could you get directly from here to here? You couldn't do that because it had to... Okay, good. A rotation of what? Of a, there you go, of 180. Okay, the primitive triangle is 39 before a series of transformations are applied. It's reflected across y equals 2. It's translated using that vector. It's translated using another vector. It's reflected across the x-axis, then rotated 90. What's the primitive of the triangle after all of that? 39. 39. Because all of these are what? Uh, none of them are dilation. They're all isometries, right? None of them change the shape or size. Okay, can you tessellate with this uh, hexagon? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So. How are you doing that? Whoa. Yeah. Mine was going to turn on the trash real quick. Ah. So something like that. Yes, you can tessellate with the hexagon. Can you tessellate with this pentagon? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let uh, let me, let me try this real quick. I'm probably about to fail at this, but. You got this. What? That's not fair. Cheating with too many. Let me see if I can. So I 
here. Can you test light with it? No. No, because the problem is you've got this gap right here that there's no way it can be filled in with. Okay? So that's the thing, is you can <laughs> not I don't even know what y'all said. You cannot tessellate with a regular pentagon. You cannot tessellate with a pentagon. With a regular pentagon, there's different kinds. Well, I just mean when I say regular, I just mean all the angles are the same and all the sides are the same length. Um, which I uh, yeah, you probably still couldn't even with an irregular one. But anyways, yeah, you cannot test light with pen. Oh, okay, you should be good there. Pretty much. Okay, moving on. I'm not going to do all of these. Uh, I'm just going to pick up the ones that I know you're going to need. So number 14 says, if a shape gets smaller, what's the range for its scale factor? Okay, it's from 0 to 1. And yeah, we can have negative scale factor, but we're not considering any of that. Okay, but it's got to be between 0 and 1. It can't be 0 or 1. What happens if the scale factor is 0? Now, if the scale factor is 0, remember, you multiply everything by the, by the scale. It would, it would vanish, basically. It would turn to nothing, to a single point. If the scale factor is exactly 1, what happens? It stays the same. So it's got to be somewhere between 0 and 1. Okay? Uh, if the shape gets larger, the scale factor is greater than 1. Okay, so if the scale factor is three fourths, is three fourths more or less than one? Less. It's less. Three quarters are like seventy-five cents. It's less than a dollar. So since it's less than one, is this going to get bigger or smaller? Smaller. Smaller. This would be a reduction. Okay. If the scale factor is five fourths, which is more than one, it's like a dollar twenty-five. That's enlargements. Okay, what about four fifths? Reduction. That's less than one, reduction. Eight fifths is more than one, it's enlargement, and then three halves is an enlargement. Okay, really, we'll be good without that. Um, okay, let's look at this one. So we start at 10, 10. We translate negative 15. That's left 15, down 15. That's going to put us right here at negative 5, negative 5. So we got that, that. Reflect over the Y. That's going to put us right here. Reflect over the X. That's going to put us right here. Translate negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. And then translate over 1, down 2. So where does that put us at? At zero zero. You just did that so quick. Uh -uh. Like I looked down. Like one <laughs> whoops, whoops. whoops. <laughs> <laughs> All that and the rules are listed on the rest of that. Like an owl. Okay. So let's get let's get to this right here. Now tomorrow on your test, I'll also have like some uh, some grids, just like some blank grids for you to have to just to do work on and stuff, so that'll help you. Okay. Number 18 says, reflect across the line y equals x. Okay? This is one thing you're going to need to know the rule on. So this is something I would definitely get down on the orange piece of paper. Reflecting across the line y equals x. What do you do when you reflect across y equals x? Uh, I'm going the opposite. Like, if it's x, you go on the y. Okay, yeah, good. So what you're going to do is you're going to switch the x and y value to reflect across the line y equals x. So like 12 negative 7 is going to turn into what? If you just switch those two, you can get negative 7, 12. You don't change the signs or anything, you just switch them. There's no question left to answer right now. I'm just waiting for people to write this down. <laughs> nope. Okay, number 19, rotate 180. This is another thing you're going to need to know tomorrow. What's the rule for rotation of 180? Yeah, what's the rule? Yeah. 
Yep, you just change the sign. So negative x, negative y. So what's going to happen to negative 7, negative 5? You just change the signs. It's going to be 7, 5. Yes. Yep, you just change the signs. If it's negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. <coughs> okay, so remember in the vector, what does the first number tell us? To go left or right. Left or right, the second number tells us up, down. Okay? So if you're at 3, negative 2, and you translate using the vector 2, negative 6. Okay, what is 3 plus 2? 5. 5. And what's negative 2 minus 6? Negative eight. Okay, and then one more thing I want you to get down. This is not on here, but um, let's write this down at the bottom. Rotate 90 degrees. So let's say you rotate the point uh, seven or negative seven, eight, 90 degrees. What's the rule for a rotation of 90? Okay, we're gonna switch them. We're gonna do something before that though. Negative. Uh, change the y to a negative. Change the y, so it's like this: negative y x. So you change the sign on the y, then you flip them. So what's gonna to happen to negative seven eight? Negative eight. Uh, I mean negative eight negative seven. Negative eight. Whoops. Negative seven. Yep. So this would turn into this. All right, your test will be tomorrow, so make sure you're prepared.